Uh, so this week I have a really super special episode because as you can see, I have a guest with me. Uh, this is Amanda J. Spedding or AJ. You might know her around on social media as AJ Spedding. Uh, this is my original editor. So before I was picked up by Orbit, uh, she did all of the editing for my self-published books. So you can thank her for me being here at all. <laughs> so say hello to AJ. Hello. Hello. Humankind. Humankind. Yes. Uh, so I thought I would start with asking the really boring but kind of still interesting question of okay. why did you decide to be an editor? Uh, good question. Um, I think mostly it was due to a love of words. Um, I should look at the camera when I do that. A love mm. of words. Uh, and uh, also with a background in journalism, after having two wonderful children, um, I wanted to stay at home and decided to run my own business editing and went back to school. Yeah. Uh, oh, <laughs> and enjoyed it. And oh. Yes. So, um, yeah, I just wanted to work at home and stay in my pyjamas and uh, drink coffee all day and Life play with goals. words. Life goals. Yeah. I like it. I like it. Yeah. You know, that's, those are all really good reasons, especially the pyjamas and the staying home and drinking coffee part. Yeah. Um, but it's not really all that easy, is it? It is not so, easy. So why don't you talk a little bit about the difficulties of starting the business and yes. some of the difficulties of the actual job? Okay, so I think one of the first things is that I was really very lucky that I have a super supportive partner who, while doesn't quite understand what it is exactly that I do, knows that I love it and just has full-time jobs, totally supports me. And without him, it would have been really, really difficult to um, get the business off the ground because it does take a long time. You can't just come into it you're new and it's a matter of building up your reputation which is really hard right at the beginning mm. um, and asking authors to put their trust in you mm. that you do know what you're you're doing so it took I think probably to get my first real client which ended up with repeat business a good year to, mm. to get after I'd finished um, my diploma and uh, my other editing course before that really started, before I started to gain momentum. Um, but without uh, my partner's help, big up Eddie. Um, <laughs> Thank you, Eddie. Uh, that it was probably a good three to four years before the business really started to uh, make its own way. So patience. I mean, patience and like and no small amount of privilege really when it comes down to it because I had somebody who could mm. take on a lot of the – the bills um, and and made sure that like we could eat food, and, yeah, <laughs> uh, drink coffee, coffee. Yep. Um, <laughs> yeah. So and and a lot of people don't have that, but there's there's a hell of a lot of perseverance. Like um, so many times, I so easily could have given up and, yeah. and just gone back to do something else. But you know, I'm I was stubborn and. <laughs> Seems yeah. to be a, a required trait for any part of this industry yeah. is uh, having yeah stubbornness and someone who can support you through the beginning times because yeah. it's the not beginning easy. times can be pretty awful. They can be soul shattering mm. at times where yeah. you just think I suck. <laughs> um, I you know, editors think that they suck too. Yeah, editors this is, think that this they is, suck too. This is good information to have yeah. for the authors watching. And that terrifying moment once you've finished and, and, and edit and written up your report and that before you send send back to anyone. We freak out. Well, I freak out. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you're probably oh, not please alone. please don't hate me. Please don't hate me. Really, I do know what I'm talking about. Um hit send and then just go into some kind of existential crisis until you hear back from them, especially if they're away and you don't know and it takes a week for them to get back to you and you think everyone hates you and you're just going to have to close up your business, shut up shop and move countries. But that's but very... we're not at all paranoid about that. Very, that very so like the author experience where as soon as we send something back, we think, oh, my God, the editor is going to hate it. Ah, I'm going to have to start again. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Let's move to a faraway island. Okay. Good. So we all well, have. No one knows this, and we don't have to wear pants. <laughs> See, the not wearing of pants seems to be a very consistent part of this industry, too. It is, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. The, the we are both wearing pants. Yeah. <laughs> you can't see it, but there is definitely pants on. <laughs> yeah. Right way around this today, too. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> see, it doesn't matter, though, if you're at home because, you know, it doesn't matter if someone sees you backwards pants. No. So what about if it's um, a difficult book to edit? Like how, how do you work through something that maybe is a genre you don't like or you just really don't feel like the book is kind of hitting it? How do you, how do you work through the, the difficulties of having to give like a lot of criticism? Be kind. Be yes. kind but be truthful. There's no point lying or trying to sugarcoat too much what needs to be done because mm. that does no service to the author or the story because it is all about the story. I think trying to get a real understanding of what the author requires or wants from you um, and if they say hit it hard, tear it apart, that they actually do mean that because I've had one or two people say that and not actually mean that and it can get a little bit awkward mm. uh, in those instances but this, you don't need to be cruel about it but it does take a lot of work and a lot of reframing of how you try and explain what would work better for the story what would work better for the the character or the arcs and how uh, it's all going to connect properly to make the story and the characters better or give them more agency and I think as long as you explain the why it and the author and, and explain it well. I mean, it, it, it's all uh, editing can be a teaching experience. That's what I mm. like to, to use it as. Yeah. So my reports tend to be way long. Um, <laughs> I am an over explainer. A inc- oh, I take a lot of notes. Um, I read a lot of notes and write a lot of notes. Um, but the more that you can explain to an author why you are making of su- the suggestions or the changes then that's something that they can take further into their work. Yeah. Until you get to a point where, like with Devon, um, I would just highlight a passage and say no or highlight a couple of paragraphs and say do better. Um, but really that comes did. with Yeah, that comes with trust though. When you start to understand that editors aren't your enemy, like we are your cheer squad, we are the people that are going to say, look, you know, I love what you've done. This is great prose. I love the way you're doing. How about, have you ever thought maybe, and run with it from there? Yeah. yeah. yeah We've yeah. had some great conversations about, and some pretty crazy ones, uh, yeah. about how things are going to move forward and, oh, but what if? Mm. No, it's, it's really good. How are we going to kill this one? There is something very freeing and, and great about having someone who can just... Uh, you know, if there is just a no or a do better or I think you can you know, fix this up, that you, you do get to a point where it feels very uh, liberating that someone really just, they, you know, they believe in you. You know that they love your work, uh, but they know that you can do better. And that's kind of cool, you know, like as much as saying no in the margin <laughs> is a bit, oh, no. Um, I still think it, it was, I always laughed. I never felt like it was, it was a... Uh, bad thing it was always just okay cool she knows I can do better and, yeah. and I will do better because she believes in me you know and that that's a good a good thing as well they're the pushing you to be your very best yes Huzzah. love the bird sorry for the bird in the background what's the bird's name Vespa 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 yes that makes more sense yeah I'm not sure what she's Vespa chatting to other birds she Yes, it is she. I do know the oh, I do know the gender of my pets. All right. Well, how about apart from books that you've worked on? So you're not allowed to say me, even no. though I know I am absolutely your favourite. Uh, favourite books. Favourite books. This year or last year, they always change. But I think Becky Chambers. Thank mm. you for putting me on to Becky Chambers. Becky Chambers is oh. very, very special. But if anyone who hasn't read uh, Becky Chambers, you should get on to that. Definitely get on to that. I am not a 
huge reader of sci-fi, especially hard sci-fi. I can never read, but um, it's not any. It's not really quite my go-to um, genre fiction. Um, but I've been reading a lot of grim dark, a lot of really dark, which I love horror. Um, and Devon suggested Becky Chambers as cleanser mm. um, or as you said a book that hugs and it really does it makes no sense you wonder how does a book hug but and um, it really really does yep. so there's the the um there's a trilogy and there is a novella that has just come out and the novella was the last one i read and it is oh my heart all the feels it her writing is just it's beautiful and it's it's kind, it's nice and it's lovely and it just makes you feel like people can be good. Mm. Mm -hmm. We are at, this is what we could be. Yeah, yeah. It, it is, the books are lovely. Uh, and kind and happy and yeah. you just, you, you, even I read just before I go to bed and you close the book and you're just like, oh. <sighs> Happy starts Happy with a uh, long way to a small angry planet is the yes. first is the first book in the uh, trilogy and is very, very, very worth picking up. Absolutely. Yes, it really is. Do it. Um, I think because I'm actually reading, I'm on the the poison song. Mm. Jean Williams have finally bit the bullet and read the last. In the trilogy. Uh, <laughs> I'm still on uh, a bit of Twins, but very, very good series. Oh, fantastic. And so good to see uh, one of the protagonists as a, a woman who is, I don't know, in her 40s. I think I, re I think I saw someone that she is supposed to be 45. 45? Mm, vintage. And, it's, it's, and she kicks ass. Oh, she's She's so wonderful. Nice. So that's that's definitely good having an older yep. protagonist. And there's war beasts and there's like slug oh, yeah. oh slug, monsters. Spoil, slug <laughs> monsters. It's it's, it's fantasy and a little bit of sci-fi yeah. and it's this wonderful very strange mix. mix very of, glorious, yeah. Yeah, it's and and the writing is just divine. Mm. You know, when so you read things and you just go, oh, I suck as an author. <laughs> Yeah, it's it, it's very good. So that's the Winnowing Flame trilogy, trilogy. by Jen Williams. First one is uh, The Ninth Rain. Then The Bitter Twins and I'm on The Poison Song and I think it's just going to like tear my heart out and just, there you go. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I did see uh, someone say on Twitter the other day that they haven't forgiven her for it. So I'm, Oh, uh, see, and that's take your time, want to speak <laughs> to it, but you don't want to just take it all in because... Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm a bit yeah. worried. Mm. Yeah, okay. Good. I think in, in uh, Ben Aranovic, mm. if I said that correctly, yeah. put me onto those as well, and I love those. That's more urban fantasy slash crime police procedural yeah, yeah. mix, kind of with gods and magic and ghosts and... Yeah, it's great a, yeah. slipstream mesh melding kind of yep. genre bending. I don't know what it is, but it's wonderful. Yeah, so I did a review on that one um, two weeks back, I think. So I'll put the link in the description for anyone who wants to have a look at the uh, review I did for the uh, Rivers of London series by Ben Aronovich. And I think one that I, two that I've really adored, I think I'm not sure how. Devin does with the swearing, but I, uh, I'm a bit of a swear. <laughs> but um, True Bastards uh, oh. by Jonathan French, mm -hmm. I think. Um, That's the second one. The isn't second it? one. Yeah, so the, the first one's Grey Bastards. Grey Bastards. And the second one is True Bastards, which I think came out either late last year or mm. was late last year. I, I think, think it, it was. was. Yeah. And I think my. Review is pretty much fucking glorious, <laughs> and yeah. So those I, I I know he's writing the third one, yeah. and uh, it's the Jonathan French one. Yeah, Jonathan French, lovely human as well. <laughs> I like that place, but that's orcs and and oh, it's everything. It's it's 
Look, if you don't like the swears and you don't like really full on kind of fights, but you know, riding war hogs and, and elves and centaurs and lots more swears and lots of sex and, and all kind of in your face glory, then, then just don't read it. <laughs> I feel like uh, anyone who, who doesn't like swearing and, and violence probably isn't reading my books and so therefore probably isn't watching my videos. All right, then, so yeah. go out and grey bastards and true bastards the shit out of those books because they are amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Go and read them. Go and find them. Look at them. Yeah. You could just keep going forever. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Shall I sense a new one out? Put that for you. Anything by Anna Stevens? Yes, yes. So we've what? suddenly changed background here. Oh, that's so much better though. It is. Far <laughs> <laughs> out. <laughs> All right. Twitter. Yeah, yeah. We, we no longer have a Twitter background. Uh, we now have a, a lovely horse background because we are so ridiculously professional at this. Um, but while it's we really are early. talking about ridiculously professional, the thing that you are ridiculously professional about is yes. actually your job. I am. So um, mostly you work with self-publishers. I do. Um, what kind of genres do you prefer to work on um, or do you work on everything? Do you want to talk a bit about that? I do work on, I can work on everything. I do have things that I, I prefer. So fantasy, grim, dark, horror, soft sci-fi. Um, those, that, that's my wheelhouse. That's the stuff that um, I love. It's what I read mostly. So that always helps, always read. Fantasy, I think, is probably where I spend most of my working life, working on... Um, Anything from grim dark, as I said, to dark fantasy, to epic fantasy, to urban fantasy. Um, but yeah, anything with monsters, I love. <laughs> love the horror. Um, and so that is where I tend to have most of my work. And that's great because I'm a very happy person. When I first started, the business, I was doing pretty much everything. So that was non-fiction, children's books, um, all that kind of stuff. Uh, and slowly trying to work my way into where I wanted to be. Um, but that's what happens when you start a business, when if uh, you're, you're wanting to be an editor and, and help people with the work, you mm. have to take on uh, what is going to pay the bills. And, uh, and then as your reputation builds if you're good at what you do then you can start to move into the areas where you want to be mm. um, word of mouth i guess have, helps there yeah, you know, especially yeah. if you have some fantasy authors that really you know recommend you then you end up with more fantasy authors really yes which is where i want to be most of my private clients are fantasy authors i think fantasy horror mm. um and then i work for uh, a small australian press doing military horror anthologies, which are a bunch of fun. Mm, lots um, of monsters, I imagine. Lots of monsters, lots of pew, 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 um, <laughs> which they, all those authors and those editors are probably going to go, no, <laughs> three shot first. Um, can't get that stuff wrong. Uh, yep. No, so I've got all my, my gun books for making sure I get all of my... That must be a really interesting uh, aspect of editing in mm. the idea of, like, accuracy, like fact-checking. Yeah. Do you do much of that or do you tend to... Yes, yeah. yeah. Fantasy, you've got a little bit more of a leeway, obviously, because you're in a totally fictitious yeah, world. just making shit up. Yeah, but once it comes to... Even though the anthologies that I work on are fictitious, the equipment that we're working mm. with, the guns and the carbines and all of the tanks and anything else that gets thrown into the mix there has to be accurate because we will and have been we pulled up on it. Look, I don't want to make a mistake either. So I do have reference books for rifles and guns and all of that kind of stuff. With I mean, you can never have too many reference books. Reference, reference books. Reference yeah. books are the bomb. Yep. Um, oh, look at that. 
I punned myself. Mm. Mm. That's really sad. And so while you go uh, as AJ on most of your social media stuff, uh, Amanda J. Spedding mm-hmm. is an author as well as an editor. She is. So do you want to talk a little bit about what you like to write? I like to write about, actually, <laughs> what I've noticed lately is writing about gods mm. and how they tend to mess everything up. Uh, and do terrible, <laughs> awful things, and then how they are just awful and trying to be good and not doing it really. Mm. Um, uh, so, yeah, so it's a really strange mix, I think, between, well, it's probably not strange, but a mix between, I wouldn't call it, it could probably sit in Grimdark, mm. um, but there is gen- generally quite a lot of horror, really bad stuff. Mm. Um I, I don't pull back from that. No, no, um, definitely somewhere somewhere between the the horror and and fantasy yeah. realms there. There's a little like tract. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know. It it does. Player. It feels like it needs its own name because dark fantasies kind of ended up being very much about vampires and things. And yeah, and so I'm not sure. I'm not sure exactly what it is, but somewhere between horror and fantasy. Yeah, uh, her her work tends to sit, and I, it's uh, short fiction for the most part. Yes. So uh, where can people find your short fiction? Oh, I think the last thing was Grimdark Magazine, um, which was Child of the Emptiness, which... We, we actually shared a, a, a table of contents with that one. That we did. very which exciting. Wonderful. Um, and uh, I'm very lucky that, that Devon is uh, somebody who will look over my short fiction and say... I don't understand what you mean by that. <laughs> and, go, and that is mortifying as an editor when you are picked up by stuff that you would normally pick up. Yeah, but, yeah. but you can't do it you in can't. your own way. And that is one thing you cannot, even editors can't pick it up. Mm. Can't pick up our own stuff. We're writers as well. It's, it's good to get some of the, you know, some of it back, you know, like yeah. all the, the no's and do this She loves letter. it. She loves it. Being she, able to just. Her little editor hat on. Yep. Yeah, I, I let nothing pass. I'm an asshole as an editor. She's a wonderful editor, <laughs> but it's good. I expect the same from her. I'm like, you know, tear the thing apart. Yeah. Um. So that was that actually got a finalist berth in the Aurealis. That one, Aurealis. So Award. that's the uh, Australian uh, Fantasy and Science Fiction Awards, the Aurealis Awards. Yeah. So that's um, super exciting. That was very exciting, except I was up against like four of my really good friends. Oh. So it was. The worst thing about Australia <laughs> having a relatively small scene. You're yep. you're pretty much guaranteed in in any uh, award to be up against good friends. Yes. So while I didn't win it, um, I was super chuffed that my friend Joseph Ashley Smith mm. won it because he is a wonderful human with the best laugh ever. Yeah. You've also won the uh, Australian Shadows Award. Yes, twice. Yeah. Yep. Twice. Twice. One for Shovel Man Joe, which is my steampunk. See, I'm all over the place. <laughs> Um, and for mm. a comic, so written yes. work in a graphic novel, yeah, which was, I guess that's the the retelling of the Persephone Hades. I do like my gods mm. um, story, uh, and boy, does she have some agency this time around. Yeah, that's yeah. great. Yeah, so the uh, Australian Shadows Award is the Australian Horror Award. So yeah, for the Australian Horror, Horror Writers, Writers Association. Association. Yeah. Yep. So. That's yes, exciting. But Look at you in all this. I know. But I've got to do more. <laughs> and Devin has been wonderful in kicking me up the arse and making – oh, yeah, you are kicking me up the arse. <laughs> I'd say bum, but we all know that's not true. Kicking me up the arse, making sure I do have my writing time because I am very busy with work and I do love my work. But I think – You have to carve out time. I think that's the thing yeah. about being an author. You know, everybody has that – that that you got to just get your bum in the seat thing, and it doesn't matter how many words you do. It doesn't matter how yeah. often you do it. But if you don't carve out the time, you just get used to not having time. No, and which is what I did last year, and we made a deal that I would carve out time in the morning, and in the last oh, we're March now. Yeah. So, but say the last two months, um, I have written more in the last <laughs> two months that I wrote all of all of last year. I have two short stories out at the moment, waiting to be. I'm going to say accepted. <laughs> yes, where where we're um, we going to hold on to that. Yep, yeah, uh, hoping to be accepted uh, and working on two more. So now I've got to slowly edge into novel territory. Well, 
that's an interesting question, actually. Do you mm. find, um, so having started with short stories, did you start there because a novel felt daunting or did Absolutely. it feel like that was it? That was, yeah. it wasn't just that short is... I also didn't think I was good enough. And I thought okay. training, um, having a background in, in journalism does not make you a creative writer. Mm. Um, I mean, I can fit stories into particular line space and all that kind of, which does help with writing tight, but creative writing is an entirely different beast. So, yeah, I think I was really lucky to get into a critique group with the Australian Horror Writers Association. Mm. We were a really good bunch of people um, who there was immediate trust. So they were, and you have to be, yeah, you have to have a thick skin for someone that we understand are your babies, but rip into it. And it's the only way you learn. And I think learning on short stories is kind of, it's like my security blanket, so I'm very happy there. Yeah. Um, I do love them being able to, like, write a complete story in a very limited word count. Um, I think help will help me write a novel in the fact that I think I can get a lot more story into a tighter space. Mm, but making every word count part of the... Yeah. yeah. So I think that's going to work. It's just getting over the mind terror. Um, of, of writing something bigger um, because that's that's really quite daunting uh, because I know how much work is involved yeah. with, with writing it as well. So um, I'm, I'm, I always had the idea of working my way up like baby steps, short fiction, novel, no, novella, no, novella, novelette, yeah. yep, yep. and then into – but I think it's, it's more of, you know, stop being such a brady cat and <laughs> – just write the damn novel because yeah. I've got the ideas. It's just and now mm. Devon has made sure I have the time. Yeah, um, that I I've just got to do it. But I think I'll always write shorts. I do love them. They yeah, are a lot yeah. of fun. People really do seem to kind of come down one way or another. You know, I started writing and I was really crap at writing when I first started. Um, but I just went straight into you know an eight hundred thousand word series because that was just felt natural to me. Uh, yeah, so it's interesting that everybody kind of has a different a different mm, space that feels comfortable. Yeah, where you start from. I suppose it also depends on where you're coming in to it as well. Mm. Um, but I think one of the things that I was lucky I got really good people around me. And I was uh, I got a mentorship with Karen Warren, the Australian horror writer, who is just mm. not only an amazing writer but like one of the best people ever. Mm. Um, and she, what she taught me in um, six months would have taken years to learn in the industry. So I was very lucky. I think I've been really pretty lucky. All right, so I think that's probably about it. So why don't you tell us uh, where people could find you on social media or website? Okay, social media. I'm probably more active on Twitter. So uh, AJ Spitty at Twitter. Um, I'm also AJ Spitty on Facebook too, not Amanda, that's my sister-in-law, can be confusing when we talk to each other, we have the same name, uh, um, she's also a wonderful human. Um, but not an editor. But not an editor, mm -hmm. no. So if you're looking for editor, Amanda, AJ Spitty. AJ. Um, website, business would be Phoenix Editing and then I blog under Amanda J Spitting and that's where you find all the stories. Mm, okay, so I'll put all the links for this in the description below if you are having a look around for an editor or just want to you know, connect with Amanda on social media because yep. she is a lot of fun. I am a lot of fun. So I guess that's it. So uh, thank you for joining us this week and uh, for saying hello to my lovely editor, me who became a best friend, uh, which is, I think, yes, a really she's up visiting my house. special, lovely thing uh, that, you know, isn't always going to happen, but... I'm very lucky that we are both very lucky so yeah so thank you for joining us and we will see you again next week well i will see you again next I week i will not see you again you next week see amanda again. Mm -mm. Okay. <laughs> she, it was enough work getting her to do this one uh, yeah. but you'll see me again next week uh, so that's it all right cool bye, bye. excellent <laughs> i made you do that you made me do a thing <laughs>
Okay. Okay. Super serious, edit the face. Super serious, author face.